Hi, this is uh, Dr. Thirith Gill. I want to talk to you today about uh, a condition uh, known as hyponatremia or low sodium levels. So this is a serious condition in the sense that uh, uh, if the sodium levels fall too far uh, down, if they're too low, uh, below 120, uh, the person can have seizures um, and it can be fatal. So um, the normal lower range is 135. So there can be different causes for hyponatremia. Um, you can either not excrete enough uh, water. There's no diuresis, you know, there's, uh, the water is retained. And um, that can dilute the blood because of the increased volume. And uh, so uh, there's a hormone uh, secreted by the hypothalamus again. Um, the posterior pituitary uh, vasopressin, also called antidiuretic hormone. And this hormone um, causes uh, water to be retained. It's often triggered because of uh, certain uh, like uh, crisis uh, due to um, trauma or injury, brain injury, or any other serious uh, medical condition where blood uh, pressure may be falling. Uh, the body retains uh, water to increase the blood volume to increase blood pressure. This can go out of whack because certain medications cause an inappropriate increase in the ADH hormone. That's syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, SIADH. So what happens when you have too much of a hormone that, so what happens when you retain too much water? Your blood, uh, Plasma will uh, be diluted, and the concentration of solutes, uh, sodium being one of them, uh, electrolytes, uh, it will decrease. So you have hypo low sodium, hyponatremia. Natremia is for sodium. So if sodium goes low, the person can have symptoms of nausea, vomiting, muscle weakness, lassitude, delirium. I think I mentioned weakness. So. Uh, if they have those kind of symptoms, you should get an um, electrolyte panel because sodium may be low. And sometimes that's the only way to find out that the condition exists because the symptoms are very vague and you may not know that that's what you're dealing with. The nursing home patients are on a bunch of different medications, uh, you know, like five to ten medications. And, uh, and, you know, one of them can have this SIADH effect. Certain medical conditions like uh, bronchogenic carcinoma, oat cell carcinoma, they produce ectopic hormones. That means uh, hormones produced by unnatural, from unnatural sources. Norm uh, the hypothalamus will release this, but certain conditions can cause an increase in the antidiuretic hormone as well. So any kind of, as I mentioned, any kind of brain trauma, brain surgery, heart failure, there are certain sodium wasting diseases, the kidney, um, low cortisol levels, uh, like in Addison's disease, uh, it will not retain sodium, so the, the sodium can be low. So the way to tell if uh, the person's sodium is low because they're drinking too much water, that's a psychogenic polydipsia, or because the medication is pulling in water and diluting the bloodstream. The way to tell that is to check the specific gravity of the urine. In the case of SIADH, when there's no diuresis, uh, water is retained. So whatever urine comes out, it'll be concentrated. This is um, in SIADH. In psychogenic polydipsia, however, the person uh, uh, is just drinking too much water and the body can't excrete it. So it, it too is uh, diluted, but the urine will be dilute also because it is the body is making dilute urine, trying to get rid of the excess water. And so there, you know, thereby you can distinguish uh, depending on the specific gravity. In psychogenic polydipsia, the urine is dilute. In uh, SIADH and in other conditions, medical conditions causing SIADH, SIADH uh, the 
urine um, will be concentrated. So what do we do with this? If uh, the low sodium is caused by a certain medication, obviously you identify that medication and you stop it. Um, a set of, uh, for psychogenic polydipsia, the choices are varied and uh, you get case reports that this or that worked, but uh, it's uh, hit or miss. So amongst the medications that, that have shown some benefit uh, in the literature uh, include uh, olanzapine, uh, low dose of clonazepam, low dose of olanzapine, clozapine, and um, acetazolamide, acetazolamide diamox, carbonic uh, anhydrase inhibitor has also been found to be helpful. So you can try them uh, while uh, they're having that hyponatremic state. You want to restrict uh, water intake to about one liter until it comes up. Um, it's very hard to restrict uh, them from drinking their water. This, uh, almost a compulsion and uh, patients have been known to drink out of the toilet because their uh, desire for water intake is so great. So um, to treat that uh, you should remove any offending agents, consider a different psychotropic regimen and uh, consult always consult a uh, primary care doctor or a internist because you do want to rule out the medical causes you know any cancers uh, that may be causing SIADH or any medications uh, uh, that may be leading to that state. So once uh, the, uh, you have identified it, the correction of the sodium uh, needs a masterful touch by your internist uh, or private care doctor because the sodium has to be brought up slowly. You also have to make a determination of whether this is acute or chronic. And it's probably better to go with, uh, assume it's chronic and raise the sodium level back very slowly uh, to only about four to six milliequivalents uh, rise in about 24 hours. So if you do the, these uh, things, you can, you can save somebody from um, possibly fatal complications of low sodium levels. And you can also make a plan for the long term on how to control such uh, complications. You can obviously remove the offending agent that's ca causing SIADH. You can treat the medical condition the best you can. And uh, for psychogenic polydipsia, you can put them on carbonic and hydrates inhibitor um, acetazolamide, or you can try that. You can try olanzapine or um, clozapine even if the condition is really serious and severe. And um, um, and also use biopsychosocial intervention. You can educate them. You can get the family involved. You can explore uh, their anxieties because a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, unstated anxiety in patients that have psychogenic polydipsia. They're often attachment issues. So sometimes it may be useful to get into that. Uh, certain events, anniversaries may trigger these anxieties and lead to polydipsic uh, uh, behaviors. So uh, it's a fascinating condition and it's worth t um, taking the time and effort to differentiate it. It's worth collaborating with a medical provider so that the patient stays safe and can go on to recover from this uh, somewhat dangerous state. Okay, thank you. Take care, bye.